Tuberous sclerosis is a very serious disease. Affects people. It's autosomal dominant. There are many lesions and many tumors all over the body. So let's get started. But what does the name even mean? Tuberous sclerosis. Tuberous is Latin. Tuber means swelling. Sclerosis is from the Greek word sclerus, which means rock, hard. So, hard swelling is the literal meaning of the disease tuberous sclerosis. So, autosomal dominant. Let's say that daddy has tuberous sclerosis, mommy has not. Okay, since it's autosomal dominant, so 50% of the offspring will have the disease, will have tuberous sclerosis. This is called autosomal dominant. Also, it has variable expressivity. What does this mean? Variable expressivity means that not everybody is similar. So... Let's say that person X has tuberous sclerosis, but it's so mild. However, person Y has also tuberous sclerosis. However, it's more severe. He has more symptoms. He has more lesions. He has more tumors. This is called variable expressivity. Okay. Also, a char genetic characteristics of the disease is that has incomplete penetrance. What's that? So incomplete penetrance means that you may have the genotype that has the disease. However, you will not express the phenotype. This is called incomplete penetrance. So you may have a bad gene. However, it's not expressed. This is incomplete penetrance. So, this is tuberous sclerosis. Autosomal dominant with variable expressivity and some form of incomplete penetrance. So, genetically, what happens? So, we have two genes responsible for it. TSC1 and TSC2. TSC stands for tuberous sclerosis, 1 and 2. 1 is on chromosome 9 and express, expresses a protein called Hamerton. 2 is on chromosome 16 and it expresses a protein called tuberin. Okay, uh, by the way, TSC2 is very close to another gene called PKD1. And it's responsible for polycystic kidney disease. So, if there is a deletion that's major enough and extensive enough to hit both genes, you'll have a patient with tuberous sclerosis who suffers from polycystic kidney disease. Leave this aside. Let's go back to our topic. So... Two proteins, hamartin and tuberin, are defective, deficient in tuberous sclerosis. These are tumor suppressor proteins, and these are tumor suppressor genes. So what happens, what will happen if you have defective tumor suppressor genes? Guess what? Tumors. You'll get tumors. And... Here there is a hypothesis called the two hit hypothesis. You need the first mutation, the genetic one, okay, the autosomal dominant one to occur. That's hit number one. Hit number two is you need another random mutation for this disease to express. That's why there is variable expressivity. So again, TSC1, TSC2, Hamartin and tuberin, respectively, are defective. These are tumor suppressor genes, so we get tumors, and we get a lot of them. So, here are the legions. Okay, let's start with the brain. 
And this is a big one. In the brain we have stuff called hamartia. These are male formed tissue. Okay? Such as what? Such as something called cortical tubers. These are tubers. These spiky lesions that are visible on MRI are called tubers. That's why the name of the disease is called tuberous sclerosis. Okay, that makes sense. Also, we get some hamartomas, astrocytomas, especially giant cell astrocytomas in the brain. And we get subependymal, means beneath the ependymal, nodules. Sub ependymal nodules what else do we have we have some retinal hamartomas they are nodular and they are also known as phacoma or phacoma and also on the face there is something called adenoma sebaceum but beware this is not the same as sebaceous adenoma sebaceous adenoma is different Sebaceous adenoma has sebum, it's related to the sebaceous glands, while adenoma sebaceum isn't. It's a misnomer for angiofibromas. So don't be confused between adenoma sebaceum and sebaceous adenoma. They are not the same. That's fine. What else? We have cardiac rhabdomyoma. Okay, rhabdomyoma occurs in kids it's analogous to what in adults what mass in the heart in adults is similar to rhabdomyoma correct it's atrial myxoma okay also we have angiomyolipomas of what of the kidneys we have some skin lesions such as ash leaf spots and shagreen patches shagreen patch is usually on the back ash leaf spots are hypopigmented lesions these are skin conditions in the lungs we have a lot of cysts the lung parenchyma the normal lung parenchyma is being replaced by multiple cysts this is so similar to a condition known as lamb lamb is what lamb is Lymphangioleomyomatosis. Lamb is a disease of the lung, has some kind of replacement of the tissue with cyst. They are very close. The problem in tuberous sclerosis and lamb are very close. So now we have seen the lesions, now let's discuss the symptoms. So angiomyolipoma of the kidney will lead to hematuria rhabdomyoma of the heart will lead to obstruction um, like blood flow obstruction also if if it's severe can lead to some form of arrhythmia um, also the CNS lesions will lead to intellectual disability formerly known as mental retardation ADHD and seizures as well as infantile spasm Okay, so we diagnose tuberous sclerosis from some criteria, major and minor, which are beyond the scope of this video. But how to manage this disease? There is no treatment, like there is no cure. We only manage the symptoms. So for the infantile spasm, there is a drug called Vigabatrin. Also, we can use ACTH. For astrocytoma and angiomyolipoma, there is a new drug called Everolimus sounds like serolimus. Everolimus. We can do surgery for both of these conditions. So that's it. What's the prognosis of the disease of tuberous sclerosis? It depends on the symptoms. Again, we said variable expressivity. Prognosis is variable because the symptoms are variable. The most common causes of death are renal diseases, brain diseases, the lung problem known as LAM, lymphangioleomyomatosis, 
these are main, the main causes of death in tuberous sclerosis. So that's it. All you need to know, tuberous sclerosis is extremely high yield for the board preparation. So focus on this condition. And by the way, next video, there is a mnemonic. It's a poetry, poetic mnemonic. It's like a song that you can learn a lot from regarding tuberous sclerosis. So please subscribe to get the next video. You will love it. See you.